In this demonstration, we're going to see how we can configure a backhoe model for hardware in the loop testing. We have a three dimensional mechanical model of a backhoe connected to a hydraulic network with three hydraulic actuators. We are happy with the results from desktop simulation and wish to configure this model for hardware in the loop testing. However, portions of our model are numerically stiff. We need to configure our solvers so that it will minimize computations and run in real time and convert this model to C code. We'll configure the solvers using the Simscape local solvers and we'll generate C code using Simulink Coder. First, we'll configure the model to use the Simscape local solvers on the numerically stiff portions of the system. Next, we'll generate C code from the model using Simulink Coder. Finally, we'll download it to the real-time hardware and run the simulation. We will see that the results for, of the model when configured for real-time simulation match our reference results very well and the model runs without overruns on our real-time target. I'll now switch over to the model so you can see how this is done. Here is the model that we're working with. Our three-dimensional mechanical model has been modeled using sim mechanics. Our hydraulic network has been modeled using sim hydraulics. You can see the pump, pressure relief valve, and three actuators all that have the same structure with a double acting hydraulic cylinder and a directional valve. When we run the simulation we can see how the system performs. We have three reference angles for the bucket, the arm, upper arm, and the lower arm, and when we look at the three-dimensional animation produced by Sim Mechanics, we can see how the bucket moves during this 30 seconds. To go through the process of configuring this for real-time simulation, we'll use this MATLAB script. The first step is to obtain a set of reference results. So we will run the simulation using the variable step solver ODE15S to get a set of reference results. We'll save these results on a plot so that we can easily compare them to the results of the simulation after we have configured it for real-time simulation. Next, we will configure this simulation to run with a fixed step solver. We are running with the global fixed step solver of ODE1, and for the numerically stiff portions of the system, we have configured the Simscape local solver. So we are using the local solver on the numerically stiff portions of the system with this sample time, and we have limited the amount of computations per time step. This will ensure that we can run our simulation with no overruns. Once the simulation is complete, we will compare these results to the reference results from the variable step simulation. The simulation is done. We will add these results to the plot and we can see that the results of the simulation with the fixed step settings matches our reference results extremely well. With this, we can now convert our model to C code and download it to the real-time target. If we look at the MATLAB command window, we'll see the messages that are generated during the code generation process. And over here, we can see the monitor, where we will be able to review the, the results of the simulation that is running on the real-time target. This is running XPC target, and we will run our real-time simulation here. So the code generation process is complete, and we can see that the model has been downloaded to the real-time target. We will use this command to set up the model to run in external mode so that the results of the simulation are also displayed on this scope. We will now run the simulation on our real-time target. You can see the results in the scope, so we can see that our simulation has begun. And on this monitor, we are plotting the bucket angle, which is the upper plot on our scope. You can see that the bucket angle is now changing on the scope and it is also showing up as changing on our monitor so we can see that the simulation is running without any overruns to this point. At the end of the 30 seconds we will upload the results from our real-time target and again compare them to the reference results we have already received to make sure that the results are accurate. You can see that the bucket angle is coming back up to zero degrees. So the simulation is now complete. We will upload the results from the real-time target and add it to our plot. And we can see that the results match our fixed step results exactly and our reference results extremely closely. So we can see that we have managed to configure this backhoe model to run in real time without any overruns. In this demonstration, we have seen how we can configure a backhoe model for hardware in the loop testing.